No fear of the cloud. You're independent here in Lancaster, New Hampshire at Porkfest 12. Where we're rocking and rolling and whatnot here in the last day. The last day. Second to the last hour of Declare Your Independence here at Porcupine Freedom Festival 12. Where we have interesting discussion. You need to go to the archive all next week. You know, I'm going to be on vacation. So you have a lot to get caught up on. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Go to the archive. Now, this is what we're going to be doing in this hour. We have Paige Peterson is in here to explain uh, Made Safe because the Made Safe Network, Safe Network, this provides us an opportunity to do the, the dream, the dream, the dream of Stefan Kinsella. Stefan Kinsella has been advocating for years. I've been, you know, pimping a lot of his. I'm going, yeah, what Stefan said. Okay, on this intellectual property thing, but how do you do it? How do you get permission from? How do you get the king to decide that they don't want to grant monopoly on somebody else that doesn't want to have a competition and it's all theirs now? How do you do that? How do you do? You don't, you don't ask permission. You just did. It. You just did. It. Well, here we have made safe is a do it thing. Neil Ross is going to help us with some technical stuff, but first I want to get you know introduce you to Stefan Kinsella. I tell you, Stefan, I know we got you in this segment here. I want you to give out your contact information, what you're going to be uh, doing your presentation on, when it is, and then define for us freedom from your perspective of what needs to be done, and then Paige will go, yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> okay, here we go, here we go. Be glad to do that. Uh, yeah, my contact is uh, C4, the letter 4, the number 4, SIF.org. I'm speaking in about 20 minutes on an, doing an anarchy debate with Will Thomas, an objectivist, taking uh, the libertarian side. And then later tonight at 5, I'm speaking on uh, intellectual property, the root of all evil. And uh, I think related to this context here of technology and file sharing and copying and the Bitcoin protocol and technology, uh, the, the basic thing is proponents of patent and copyright, which they call intellectual property erroneously, um, they say that with the increase in the importance of knowledge, technology, information, that patent and copyright laws are ever more important. Now, our view is the exact opposite, that they're ever more dangerous, and that's why they're being ratcheted up. In fact, just last week, Obama finally got his trade promotion authority, the Fast Track Authority, which is going to usher through the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and I thought they were stopping, resisting, and didn't, and you weren't allowed, and it wasn't going to have made us feel like it wasn't going to happen. It happened? They they made us feel like that, so that we it, went it's away. It's done? So there's not a SOPA uprising, but TPP, I'm certain, will pass, and so will the TPIP, which is a European version, and the Trade and Services Agreement, all of which expand U.S. intellectual property laws across the world, which has nothing to do with uh, with free trade. So basically, patent and copyright law are growing threats. So what's good is ways that we can circumvent patent and copyright law, especially copyright, because like you say, videos come down, YouTube can, uh, the owners of the copyright can issue takedown notices, so it's a big hassle, even though the internet is the world's greatest copy machine, so they're doing everything they can to ruin the internet and to frustrate that, so we need technology that allows people to keep sharing, keep copying, keep sharing information, and making information accessible over a network without the ability of these copyright holders and governments sending takedown notices. Okay, this why? Yeah, this is this is extremely important to a lot of people for a lot of reasons. But I'm saying in the freedom-oriented, we have a better life, grandchildren, future. We're so much better off. I get my flying car. Man, it's all about my flying car. How come I don't have my flying car? You know, it's because uh, there's some intellectual property government in my way thing. I can guarantee it. So I'm just going, give me a description of how much better off we would be with this philosophy. Well, in terms of copyright, we'd be a lot freer. We'd be a lot freer to share information. Uh, copyright basically amounts to censorship, it, and it distorts the culture. Economically, patents harm us on the tune of trillions of dollars a year. It inhibits technology, technology, and it reduces innovation greatly. So we all, without a doubt, be more technologically advanced and wealthier uh, without the patent system. And in fact, 3D printing is coming up, and it's showing kind of a mel uh, uh, an intersection between copyright and patent in the sense that all you need to make something in the future as 3D printing comes along is to get the information, just like getting information um, 
uh, about a movie, now you get information about how to design a, an item. You need to be able to get be able to get that information as well off of the internet. You know, we had Cody Wilson. Uh, I got the Ghost Gunner to make these uh, AR-15 lowers just as a point. I mean, you know, you're not going to be able to stop it. But what did he do with the first 500 Ghost Gunners that he sold? He took the money and it funded the lawsuit against the United States State Department against preventing them from posting 3D files to make your own gun. He's going, uh, I'm going to take this and fund this to go against that. And that sounds like an intellectual property thing to me. Well, this is one reason my talk tonight is called Intellectual Property, the Root of All Evil, because the law you're talking about is not really t- called intellectual property, but it operates the same. It's basically the government using its uh, espionage laws and its export control of exports to classify information as an export and then to control it under its Bureau of Export Yeah, blah, 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 they got a gun. So the point is, it's like a copyright. (laughs) So the the mentality of copyright infects a lot of other federal and state laws that are not classified as copyright or patent. Okay, so now you can see, I I hope the audience understands how important it is, you being here and the presentations and the flavor and the talk about what you're doing. But then I go, all right, so what's the solution? As I've been screaming this for years, I remember it's like a year and a half ago, they go, you sound like this guy David Irvine. You know, we met him at the Berlin, uh, you know, Bitcoin account. You should talk to Kai, talk to him. I go, are you freaking kidding me? I've been waiting for you my entire adult life. And it, and it's right in line with this kind of stuff. There's no page. You know, you got a solution for Stefan. You're going, hey, man, you know, we were thinking of you. Yeah, so uh, it's really a very similar story to how the whole BitTorrent thing went down. Um, like, it, there's really no stopping it. They can target people. They can make examples of people. But in the end, there's no real stopping it. What MadeSafe is doing is taking that model and bringing it an extra step. So with BitTorrent, you don't have encryption and security built in. <laughs> and um, and it's not really as efficient as it could be uh, the way it stores data. So MadeSafe is just taking this concept of a distributed um, table, hash table, um, and bringing that to making it so that you can put the entire internet on it or you know build services on top of it and whatnot. And it's open. Uh, BitTorrent, the protocol is open, but a lot of the services that are built on top by the company are not open. Okay, so MadeSafe is, I, I'm, I'm wanting to understand, when this is launched, I just want to know one thing. Can I load up a video to this network and it always forever and always be accessible to anyone that wants to go look at it on their computer and we're done yeah um you will Score! yes that's Score! the answer, yeah. all right all right all right all right Stephen, what would be in, in this kind of what would be your first questions you're going yeah but tell me about i mean what, what's the first thing pops in your head you might be have a concern about well i mean a lot of people have gone to jail you know literally or uh because of these accusations of copyright piracy on a massive scale. So you want to you want to do it so someone is not liable. If you're going to do it where the DMCA takedown process can't operate, then that removes this safe harbor that's under the law right now, which is as long as you're a service provider and you follow the takedown process, then you're exempt from liability. That's why Google responds on YouTube uh, to these takedowns. If you around that system, then in her system, and the MadeSafe system, which I assume they're taking uh, into account. You need to have some kind of anonymity or inability of the copyright holder to find out uh, exactly where the data is stored and who's responsible for it, in effect, posting the finding link. That's right? precisely what is done. So the files themselves aren't stored in any one place. They're stored in chunks. Uh, a couple of a uh, couple of copies of each chunk are stored, and yeah, so it's it's taking the BitTorrent thing. Okay, and then moving there's the new arc. law coming. I can feel it. It's feel like I say, hey, but I can access that. We can't get it. File on Freedom Phoenix, so you must die. Hellfire missile. Okay, I, I say, is that the new one? They're gonna come get me. I don't think they're gonna go quietly into that good. To be a part of the show, call 602-264-2800. 602-264-2800 and now Ernest Hancock Are we back? Yeah, we're back. Okay, we were sitting there talking uh, uh, sorry, we're saving the planet and, and you, you were you know, kind of sort of there. Alright, this is what we're going to do I am looking at MadeSafe uh, as a solution to a lot of things 
And I, I, we have Stefan Kinsella in, and he, he kind of defined what the real problem is. Intellectual property is the, the king granting a monopoly of you had an idea, nobody else can have the idea, and you get paid for the idea forever idea. But it turns into, eh, we don't want you sharing that idea. And we have the capacity of, ah, no, we got to switch. And we turned it off in the takedown notice of you want to keep doing business in America, you need to count, and it's gone now. Even when it is not a violation, I give you 15 gazillion examples of how it's throttling down uh, not just dissent and whistleblowing, but I mean actual useful information. So now we have the capacity, a new network that is being created that says, you know what? We're going to go ahead and provide a network that allows for everyone to interface with everyone else and any file that you put up. Say so you got a Dropbox account. You got your Gmail. You got your grid of I'm on the man's uh, the Amazon cloud of every search I ever had right next to the hard drive to the CIA's next Yemen drone strike. Okay? I mean, we could do that, you know? Or we can go ahead and have our own network that's our own computers that interface with each other. As a young activist in the 90s, this is how I thought the Internet was going to evolve. It was bulletin boards. People put up information. They shared information. It went ones and zeros you know, across the country to other nodes that were just getting faster and faster and faster. Hey! There's this World Wide Web uh, DARPA DOD Department of Government thing. Let's go do that. That'll work out well. And I'm going, yeah, okay. You had a lot of surfaces built on this foundation of the king's sand. And I'm going, it doesn't matter how high your ladder is if it's on the wrong effing wall. Okay, but look how high we are and look what we can do and we can cast the feathers to the wind and it goes all over and everything and we're in the dominion of the dimension of the man. And I'm going, well, how's that going to work out? We need to purposely, you know, uh, as a philosophy, come up with another way of sharing ones and freaking zeros with another human's mind. That's it. I just want to be able to do Wayne's World from grandma's basement to out and anybody can. Now, think about it. In the 80s, when I'm a young activist and, and in my 20s, we're raising a family, and wife, we're bringing them up and so on. All of a sudden, the concept that, you know, uh, Wayne's World could be done from the, to the planet from the basement of grandma and it become a popular show and it's built. That concept was just introduced to us. It was, it was a dream. Oh, it was cable television. Then here comes, you know, um, uh, the internet. And, oh, my God, whoa, we get video on that. I'll never have video. What are you, stupid boy? You don't got to go, yeah. Well, Freedom's Phoenix was in our mind in 96. We had all developed. We were waiting for bandwidth. We were waiting for video. We were waiting for the technology to get caught up. YouTube hit, pulled the trigger 10 years. Freedom's Phoenix, we keep developing along the lines of waiting for made safe. When I'm going, I'm d describing what has, I go, how come we're not doing this and this? And you got the blockchain technology of the encryption of sharing them ones and zeros. And you got, you know, CubeSats coming up. We got out of hell. We had the Iridium satellite constellation in the nineties. This is all probably, it's right freaking there. We go to spaceship one. We're out there with the signs. We're going to space and government's not invited. Spaceship one, government zero. Okay. We had those signs. So I understood, and my hope and my dream was, was the ability to be able to communicate ones and zeros. I don't care if it's blockchain, Bitcoin, transaction, financial, how to make hemp oil to cure your cancer, if I want to watch a video and kind of in a little bit of a snippet of a rejoinder piece of Led Zeppelin, if I, you know, and they can suck it, okay? This is now at our fingertips, this whole concept. Hardware and software have gotten to the point to where every individual can communicate with every individual on the planet. That has to be dangerous to the man. So they are going, no, we're going to throttle and control and limit, and you're not allowed. On what? I don't know. Whatever we say, we got an excuse, we'll make it up. Don't worry about it. You know? So what are they coming after? Opinion. They're coming after dissent. They're coming after whistleblowing. They're coming, to, you know, in the, the transparency, open uh, administration or whoever next. You know, you know, vote for nobody because nobody's going to, you know, end the wars and nobody's going to, you know, lower the taxes and nobody's going to stop getting out. So I, I'll vote for nobody. OK, what the hell? You know, so now we're looking at made safe. Made safe is an opportunity. 
Now, Ross, I'm going to need him to help me with, you know, some of the technical and what things that he looks for and make sure. But I need Paige, you know, in the last of this segment, I just need you to tell me what the promise is, and then we'll start getting into technical of how we're going to do it. What is the promise of the Made Safe Network? So in terms of the data that's being uploaded uh, and the users that are interacting with it, they'll be able to upload whatever data that they have um, and, Ones wi- and zeros. without any risk of it being taken down. Um, in fact, there's, there isn't even a way to take down data if you want to take it down at this point. Uh, we might add that in later, but it's, or not. it's kind of p- perpetual data at this point. So it's, uh, and it's going to enable this data not to be seen if you don't want it to be seen or to be seen widely if you do want it to be seen. There's ability for, um, so it really is like an infrastructure for software to be built on top of. So there'll be a whole market of different applications that you'll be able to use. It'll, it's essentially an alternative internet that doesn't use servers. So if you can imagine everything that's developed o- over the past uh, couple decades with um, the current server-based internet, you can kind of imagine a similar path, but a more freeing path uh, to be taken with a decentralized network. Okay, now this is my first question. I'm going, okay, so we have this decentralized of everybody gets to get, and you still have ISPs. I still have my Cox, Verizon, AT&T if I rule you. And then I go, all right, what's my email? My first email was, you know, back in the, the safe at indirect.com 93 of I don't have it anymore, okay? I got uh, Ernest Hancock at cox.net. Well, that's... Whose is that? Is it Ernest Hancock's or is it Cox.net's? Okay. So I'm looking at something as simple. Keep in mind, not just to have files up there, but to be able to chat, to be able to Skype, to be able to use these kinds of servers. It doesn't have to be Skype, but, you know, video conferencing, use it on my radio show, being able live from the bomb crater in the middle of the street in Baghdad if I just had my iPhone. Okay. These are the kinds of stories that we're doing to rear square. You know, we're during the rough. I mean, I'm in Kiev. You know, we're in Yemen. We're in Af- Iraq, Afghanistan. I mean, I've done lots of shows there. You know, freaking Yemen. I mean, um, uh, uh, Tunisia. So I'm going, okay, this ability still has to funnel through a bottleneck of communication. Is there going to be the ability that you know, we use CubeSat, satellites, Elon Musk, 4,000, you know, I got a little uh, baby you know, moon base alpha, of, they can suck it. You know, this Needs, I need to know if I'm going to be able to get an email that I don't have to change all the time. I mean, it's me. This is me. Well, what do I call it? It doesn't matter what you call it. It's like forward in the domain, the whatever. It's, it's me. I got a blockchain identification of world citizen of a suck it. It's me, 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 me. And I have the password. Well, it's really me. You know, or it's biometric. This is where we're going. Mate Safe's going to help. We're going to talk about it. Ross is going to define. Welcome back to the Clay. Your independence of me, Ernest Hancock here at Porkfest 12. Porkfest 12. Oh, and it's really easy to declare your independence. really easy. You go like this. You go like this. You go, ah, declare my independence. See how easy it was? No government form. You won't be finding any forms up here. As you know, the man showed up on, on Monday, I think it was. They were going to, hey, we need to explain it to you. You know, you guys, uh, you don't have enough. You're not formed up. We got the form right here for you. Don't you want to comply and be a good guy? And uh, Crosby comes in. He goes, "Hey, man, I'm, I'm, you know, send the girls out. I, I, I wasn't here when they came in. They wouldn't have got past the, past the front gate. Get their ass in here in the restaurant. And while well, the crowds are out, you know, pitchforks and torches, pitchforks and torches. And they go, he goes, "Hey, man, I'm just saving you. You know, just give me the forms and I'll kind of peace out. They leave. And he's like, Phew, man, they dodged a bullet. You know, he's going, yeah, no, you guys are all good. Don't worry about it. I just, ah, oh, take somebody like that. But I need to know if there's an infrastructure that we can have to where we're not worried about the guy with the clipboard because who's he going to go to? You know, wh- wh- where's, where, where's the subpoena getting served? You know, what, what doors are getting kicked in and they're taking all y- your servers? You know, wh- where does that happen? It's Uber. Uber's doing it. Yeah, yeah. Boo. Hut, 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 hut. They go in and take the server. Kind of what happened when you have, you know, Lazoos which is the same thing as Uber using Bitcoin without a central server. If it's on your, your cell phone and I need a ride and they show up and it's done the transaction and bite me, you know, uh, uh, what server got kicked in? 
made safe. You know, this is the kind of concept that's like, we're not here anymore. Hello. And goodbye. Okay. So here, what we're going to talk about and how it relays to this and kind of what Cody Wilson's doing in this psyop against the man, you know, and uh, you just can't stop us, but we're going to play the game along with you. You know, Murdoch Pagotti is don'tComply.com. Come and take it, Texas. Now, what they did is they took a, a ghost gunner mill that takes an 80% lower. It's like 80% finished out. It's still just a hunk of aluminum. And when you take out and you mill out some certain areas and drill a couple of holes, and then and you got an AR-15 lower that cost you 29 bucks. You bought in bulk of, I got six of them. And you sit there and you go, and now I got AR lowers and they don't have a serial number and the man doesn't know about it. And it's legal. Ghost Gunner. Oh, it's a ghost. He goes, okay, I'll call it Ghost Gunner. All right, that's cool. You know, you guys want to help do the marketing for me. That's nice. You know, so then now we're in a situation to where you go to Austin Capitol, you set up a ghost gunner, and tell me what happened. Yeah. Come on. All right. Go yeah. Ahead. First day of the 84th legislative session, Austin, Texas, right in front of the Capitol building, we set up the ghost gunner, and we crank it up and start manufacturing firearms. They let you plug it in? They even let you have a plug? We had it specially wired to run on batteries. Oh, remote. Okay, okay, go. And we had some solar panels, so we were off grid with the with the item. Oh, that's you know green gun making. That's 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 even worse. All right, go ahead. So, anyways, we had we had every news agency under the sun all showing up, pointing cameras at it, saying, "What are you doing here? You're making firearms." And it was really a good PR spin for us because then we turned around and we pointed at HB 195, our constitutional carry bill that we were trying to get passed, and every news agency then posted it and started talking about it. Uh, but you know, it was kind of a a wink, wink to the government that it doesn't really matter if you give me constitutional carry, what laws you pass or don't. I'm going to be manufacturing firearms, and I'm going to be armed uh, to the teeth no matter what. And the response was, uh, top of the morning to you, sir. We'd love to protect your rights of the expression of you get to whatever. And they passed open carry this term. Oh! This so, the, so the response, hey, pass open carry, doesn't matter. We're just going to make it. It's Texas, man. You know, six packs and guns. Just get over it. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So now now we're at the situation to where we have defense distributed. Cody is still in a battle using the profits from 500 of the first ghost gunners to fund the lawsuit against the State Department, preventing the transfer of these files that would allow someone to do this kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I still don't think that he can email those files around, uh, even to the people who bought the ghost gunner. I think it has to be shipped or, or some other method. I get a memory key. Hand. He goes, yeah, I got that. I go, you know, it'd be nice if he goes, yeah, I got that. Well, just send me the, can't. 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 Yep. He's Made still... safe. <laughs> yeah. Made safe. Yeah. He's, you know, he, his hands are still tied on that issue. Um, but it is an open source, uh, program for that. So, I mean, any type of, uh, group can get together and, you know, and make uh, 1911 or whatever whatever other file that they want. You know, this is, I, I remember after they did the Plastic Liberator, within a year, I think it was, you had uh, uh, a manufacturer or 3D print, printing the metal out of stainless steel and titanium and kind of the only thing that wasn't 3D printed, I think, was a spring. And I'm going, are you freaking kidding? All right, well, that didn't take long. And I've seen it at Consumer Electronics Show. They had the upper on the 45 for me to look at, and I go, is this as strong as a forged? Is that they go better? Because it's a perfect crystalline structure of how the layered kind of bet. I go better, and then Elon Musk starts making, you know, uh, motors and pumps and rocket engine kind of nozzle. We just had uh, well, a, a rocket engine nozzle, nozzle made out of platinum. 3D print. I'm going, oh, it's so freaking over. But I'm telling you, you can understand why this made safe thing is important. In that the very side, the ones and the ones and the ones and the freaking zero. I mean, it's ones and zeros, seriously. Okay, I'm going, they're like, nope, not allowed. Oh, well, it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't make any difference with this appeal to you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what we're looking to do is spread information and and, and put this type of uh, technology in the hands of everybody. You know, we, we, you don't need a certain skill set to make a gun anymore. You just need a computer and a fairly cheap machine and hit enter. And they just need the file. I remember when they were doing the Liberator and he came up with the concept of defense distributed defense distributed okay well of course they go after that they're like you're not allowed to distribute defense then you get the memo <laughs> we're the government man so this is in something like this page help me out you know if they just had defense they just have 
files because they're having servers. They're on, got a URL that went over in the tour. And cut. I remember when they did the AR-15 lowers. I said, hey, Cody, can you put it to where it has my safe logo on? The Second Amendment is for everyone. He goes, sure, and he makes it. I come up here last year. I think it was last year. I come up here, and uh, Bill Domenico had 3D printed four of them. I'm giving them out. I give one to Boston Tea Party. I give one to some other friends. I think Richard Grove got one. I give them, the, and then I had one I left at my backpack going through check out TSA at Logan. It became an issue. Okay. <laughs> I got it back though. They let me ship it and they wanted to keep it for training purposes. And I'm going, no, well, fine. Just sign here that you got my training purpose. You know, Cody Wilson designed 3D printed, you know, 30 round mag and I'm all over it. Here, just take it. Never mind. Damn, I go, damn, but I want it. I want it on a piece of paper. So anyway, so we got video of that and we had some fun. But I'm going, this kind of thing, this is, I mean, just a representative of the kind of stuff that you're hoping the Safe na- Network will provide for. Right, Paige? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm I'm assuming that all of these plans are on BitTorrent already, uh, but there there is, again, that extra layer with Made Safe, the whole... An- like being able to stay anonymous if you're if you're worried about you know being targeted for holding the files. So. You know, for me to do that, they said, Ernie, you need to put this on the tour. The what? BitTorrent. Yeah, so, well, yeah. whatever it is, man. Or, you know, there's a thing. Yeah. I had to. I got to download a thing, right? So I download a thing. I put the take the file and I put it up. And they said you have to make your computer available for this to be a node of it gets copied of somebody and it propagates out of the whatever and it suck up all my RAM and you know memory and kind of go wait 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 I didn't want to devote a computer just to put one damn file up i mean what the hell so anyway so i did that for a while the file got out there and now it's done i can turn it off and it's your peace i can go find it it's out there somewhere but i tell you it's not it, it even this tour the thing that makes this stuff available now you know made safe is going to solve a lot of that problem i'm hoping yeah i mean the idea is that um you don't i mean you're you're still going to need to keep your computer on but you're going to be keeping your computer on for all of your data and because and you don't need to keep it on you can turn it off and it kind of it the network will be able to adjust with the computer oh, turning but it if off. i keep it on don't i make me some money make yeah some money. that's the incentive you oh, make keep more it on, make money but it's not like an issue if you need to turn your computer off it's not going to be it's an issue i ain't making more, more money you know well, i'm going okay. to, i got demo, <laughs> d- devoted sitting over there i'm waiting i got ready for play on table okay give me you know infinity algorithm if i got the hardware to plug it in the mining of the safe corner i'm going to plug it in i'm money you know, I'm going, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. See, that's what I saw as the incentive of this. A lot of people, I saw it happen with Bitcoin. When you incentivize participation financially, they go, um, um, incentivization works with me. Here we go. But that's one concern that Paige wants to voice is that once you start having, it's like all the the miners coming in and we roo with the storage of data. So we're going to see, is that being addressed? Is it going to be democratized, decentralized, distributized to everybody? You know, this is uh, uh, the last day. I mean, we made it through, we made it through, we made it through, and now I can par- party. I party. You haven't seen, you think you saw the Ernie partying? Well, that starts uh, in about an hour and a half. All right, we're going to get rock and roll and whatnot. Now, one thing that I wanted to make sure that we finished and that we got to, you know, get a beat on here is that all of the problems that we're seeing a lot of times here at Porkfest and talking to people is, you know, what? Is it that we have to accomplish to be able to be left alone in our sharing of information, perspective, and, you know, the path that we're on that we just, we're over here now. We don't need your interference or somebody else, they, them, those, tell us what we can and can't do. And I'm wanting to make sure that that is uh, front and center that we're thinking about it. Because we have now in Arizona, almost summer, uh, one of the activists there, she had her first child. She was it, right here behind us on these walls. It would say, no more slave numbers for children. 
She was going against this, you know, given a number, birth certificate number, social security number, of a number, and, you know, DNA sample of blood off the heel. Hey, you're born in here. We're going to stick you in the foot, okay? So she's like, no, I don't want to do She had to have emergency cesarean, but she made it out of the hospital with no social security number, no vaccine, and no birth certificate. And they go, well, you have to. She goes, do I have to? Do I have to? You sure I have to? Do I have to? Well, you know, I'm going to walk out the door with my baby, and you're going to tell me I have to what? And I go, eh, well, yeah, and an undocumented human tour that she went, undocumented human Bitcoin tour, went around the country with her baby, Neo. Of course. Mm-hmm. Neo, the one. Here it comes. You know, one in seven billion of people ever born. Here comes the, I think it was about the right number. Mm. <laughs> so it comes out. She got, but he got it. He, he's got, he's got a, a Bitcoin account. He got a Bitcoin account. Oh yeah. And you saw him at the Texas Bitcoin yeah, conference. We yeah. were at the Brave New Books. That was Nia, that I baby. You know, so I'm going, okay. So, you know, he's got a, I got a Bitcoin account. You know, so now we can start to register the, but where will we register it? Where will we put our marriage? Where will we put our land? Where will we put ourselves? Everybody else has got a number and a form and a document and a stamp seal of approval of barcode. You know, how about uh, oh, you will neither be able to work or trade without the mark of the beast of the uh, try not to have a social security number and tell it see what happens. OK, so I'm going. All right. There was a grandmother that wrote a letter to her in the late 90s to her future granddaughter that was estranged from her because her daughter was mad that they uh, didn't get her social security number. So it destroyed her life. She couldn't get a job in the driver's license of now, and I don't like my mom. So she goes to her granddaughter, and the letter it said, I always was a, a, bit, a lot of other things. It wasn't very long, but the main part that I remember was I always knew not to give a government number to my children because I knew that the rancher always wants to mark their cattle. And I go, enough said. I get it. But what if I want to be marked? What if I want to have multi-pass of international, my uh, passport of world, this is me? Can I put it encrypted on a biometric of I gotten my Bitcoin, altcoin of whatever coin I want to transact and travel and have a deal with the airline if I get then this is me? You know, can I voluntarily do that? Where do I register it? Where do I have that? I have the same email for, or the same, be able to communicate me, and it could be telephonically, it could be mm-hmm. by text, it could be by Skype, you know, or video conferencing. So this is what I need. I have the data. Okay, we got made safe for doing that data. What about the marking of me not being tracked by a satellite of the man, but by my mom and my daughter and my grandkids? You see my point? Yeah. I mean, the the, the basic idea of what you're trying to say is like having being able to own your identity and being able to share the the information from that identity in certain circumstances uh based and on not certain another. situations and not have it public to uh, a huge group of people that um you know say what you can and can't do so that's that's very much possible with a, a lot of decentralized networks but um the ability i think the ability to be anonymous with that identity is what MadeSafe will uh, really push forward. Now, this is an infrastructure for these kinds of options and abilities to be built on as what? An app, a program, yeah. an interfacing something? Like- yeah, so this is like an underlying infrastructure, and applications will be built on top. We have developers that are interested and in, already interested in making the basic applications, messaging applications, you know, contact list applications. So it's going to happen. It might I take- keep my black book encrypted on MadeSafe. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Of course. Of All course. one name of my wife. I bail myself out of that one. Okay. So, uh, uh, Rasa, what's some of your first questions? I mean, you look at that. You're hearing this stuff. Did it even occur to you to have like a forever uh, one zero ID of this is me? Well, when you were saying that, I was thinking like, if you're fighting against having you know your own brand, why would you want by the government? Why would you still want your own brand? And then it kind of hit me that in the world of like freedom and free trade and liberty, your identity is your number one possession. So yeah, it's we definitely everything. Need it's that. your yeah. reputation. It's your integrity. Your it's who wants to do business. Yeah. It's your credit rating. It's you know, do I want to do the BTC jam of you get five hundred dollars to save the planet? In yeah, India? exactly. 
So, uh, I mean, I didn't really know that MadeSafe could do the apps before, but that's a really exciting thing that they can do that because this uh, identity and reputation was one of the last things that the whole Bitcoin world was trying to save and was uh, solve and was not able to yet. Yeah, hey, Jay. yeah. I think the problem with the the blockchain solutions, as of now at least, are that it, you don't really have that ability to be anonymous uh, from the beginning and. Um, there's still a lot of work to do with making blockchains more private uh, in terms of transactions and whatnot. So um, hopefully MadeSafe can kind of complement complement it. See, there's one thing a lot of people, and myself included, for a time I need to understand. MadeSafe is not really um, – it's a platform upon which dreams can be built. Yeah, and we're building we're building a couple applications ourselves to that they're, we're calling them example applications, uh, so other developers can kind of look at them and build off. But there are going to be applications, so they'll we have a few that will be released when we kind of launch. Well, what do they have to do with it? Are they secret? Or are you going to tell me? They're I mean they're basic, so they're they're going to have like the the storage is built in. We're we're working on a messaging application. Um, those are the two main ones. Uh, so, I mean, the safe coin is kind of a built-in application as well. Uh, just being the reward to, mechanism for and, participating, which is amazing. And to be able to send, uh, send, uh, currency to other people in a similar way that Bitcoin does it, but, uh, completely anonymous. Um, I think that's, that could kind of bring, uh, an end in death to Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, hey, you say that. I'm, okay. All right, Mr. <laughs> Super Big it. Brain Box Rasa Dimitri, you know, let's see what I said. Marachik. Marachik. Sure. Marachik. Yeah. I know. Guy, help me out, man. Okay, Dimitri. You know, it's a Dimitri Big Brain Box versus Little Brain Box Ernie Hancock. Let me tell you what, you know, the, the opinion is. I am like, you know, the second they have anonymous integrated with everybody kind of ones and zeros to anybody to whatever the one address of somebody and that's you know biometrically i know and you say it's you and i believe and we're communicating ones and zeros but a cryptocurrency whatever when that happens it's going to replace everything else okay mm -hmm. in my opinion so eventually yeah so and, and, and even more if we you know we're getting into goldman sucks bitcoin mm. out of my pocket you know, so I'm just, I, I understand, you know, it's powerful, it's a big network. But no, the I mean, I was just like, regarding MadeSafe, I am really hoping that the point of MadeSafe coin is to reward you for hard drive storage so that the coins will be linked to the amount of hard drive storage there is and it'll be a market between where the coins are equal to hard drive space. Yeah, well, not just hard drive space, but providing ones and zeros to the network yeah. and bandwidth. Yeah. yeah, it's about the resources, so you need bandwidth, obviously. You yeah. need but you don't want that same thing to be your money, too, because then your money will be based on inflation of hard drive storage space. So they're very, very good, different specific uses for each one, is what I'm thinking. Shapeshift! Yo, then what am I doing? You know, then I'm going, then I'm going over to Shapeshift and I'm saying, hey, uh, uh, I want to trade this in at the time of the market of every time of I get and I go to the end of something else and next. I love Shapeshift. Too. I know the crypt, the cryptocurrency, you know, it's, it's going to be outside of demand. It's going to be controlled by, you know, demand and supply. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, what shall we do? What shall we do? We're going to talk about more in the next hour. We have, uh, well, Luke Radowski, well, if he doesn't show up, which, you know, is entirely likely, he was partying pretty hard. You know, we have Luke Radowski out here, these stories. We're going to be talking about a lot of the same stuff as it applies to these ones and zeros. Mm -hmm. And then Lisa Arbacheski wants to talk about Ross Ulbricht and her plans. We'll give her a moment.